Hi, everyone. It's Doreen. I'm so, so happy about this interview because this is a frequently asked question I get. Now that we know that Bethel and Hillsong and Elevation Music are using their music as fishing poles to draw people into their false gospel churches, and many of the songs have heretical lyrics that are like earworms that can um, teach people wrongly. Uh, people write me and say, okay, who should I listen to? And, and I'm not an expert on who we should listen to. I've got a few of my favorite bands, but I found an expert. I've actually found this brother in Christ on the app Parlor. If you haven't checked out Parlor, please come. It's just such a nice oasis. Some people call it an echo chamber, but I like that, of, of people who are conservative Christians. So um, this is Justin Ray, and his website, which I'm going to highly recommend that you visit, is soundinworship.com. Justin, thank you so much for joining me today. Yeah, thank you, Dory. I'm glad to be with you. So how did you get started with sound and worship? So honestly, it started with a lot of my own failures in discernment. Uh, I wanted to make a site because I love music. Of course, everyone loves music. Uh, but I love worship music. And I went many years of my life just listening to any kind of worship music that sounded good. Uh, if As long as the lyrics weren't just crazy, wacky or something like that, and it sounded talented if i liked it i would listen to it wouldn't think about it twice um so i was really convicted i i started listening to podcasts um one of which would be wretched radio with todd friel um other people people have you have you've had on uh justin peters uh ministries like that kind of opened my eyes to what's going on with some of these artists what they're rooted in what their churches are proclaiming, and why it's important that we choose sound worship. Um, so I look forward to talking to you about some of the great artists that are out there and then about warning about artists that need to be warned about. Oh, thank you so much, Justin. This is so needed right now. Um, I personally, because I, I was a musician for many years, my mom put a violin in my hands when I was, gosh, six, five or six years old made me take violin lessons and then I got into the guitar for many years and and so I just know that what you listen to can be more influential than what you read and you know we can eat, I mean I can make an example if you think about some of your favorite songs from high school most people could call up the lyrics even though they haven't heard them for a while so this is really important um, why don't we start with the good news like what bands do you recommend yeah, so I've done a good bit of research, uh, which is something that opened my eyes to some really great artists that I actually had not ever heard of, uh, one of which was City of Light. And I'll tell you why. Um, almost every song that I hear from City of Light, you can tell it's rooted in biblical theology. Uh, it's got sound lyrics. Um, and then I also look into who's writing the music. Uh, who's writing those lyrics. So I got a good quote for City of Light. Uh, Rich Thompson, he's the songwriter for City of Light. He says, I'm particularly passionate about seeing churches equipped with songs that are simple and easy to sing, but are full of biblical truths. Um, and then this next part is, is really what made me think, okay, I need to look into City of Light more. Um, he goes on to say, what we're doing here is essentially teaching theology. And so we have an enormous responsibility uh, when I read that or I watched the video of him saying that, I was like, okay, this this should be a good one. That is refreshing to hear. Definitely. Because so many of the bands that you hear of, they, they think of music not to teach, but to market. Uh, it's, you know, not even evangelize, but to market and get people to come to their church. So how refreshing that he wants to teach biblical sound doctrine through his lyrics. Absolutely. Yeah. And another thing he said too, was that they wrestle with the lyrics, um, which, which I love because that he, I think he mentioned that sometimes it would take him six months to write a song, which is great. Um, it means he's putting a lot of thought into it. He's not just writing the first thing that comes to his head. Um, there's a lot going into it. And, and I'll read one of my favorite lyrics. Um, it's from the song Jerusalem by City of Light. It says, see him there upon the cross now no longer breathing dust that formed the watching crowds takes the blood of Jesus. It's just, you know, when someone writes something like that, 
They're in the word. That's right. That's wonderful. Yeah, that's straight from the heart, from the word. That's beautiful. And so City of Light, highly recommended. And I can't wait to hear about other bands that you recommend. Yes, yeah, so Matt Boswell and Matt Papa, uh, both Matt's. I believe they might work with the Gettys uh, from what I've seen. At least they have on some projects. Um, I know Matt is a solid pastor, and you can tell that in the lyrics that he writes as well. Uh, Matt Boswell, that is. And Matt Papa leads worship music. Um, so that's another great choice. Some good playlists for these artists as well. Kind of give you a way to sample out some of these songs. So um, Also, so you've got Matt Boswell, Matt Papa, Sovereign Grace, uh, Norton Hall Band. Uh, it's a band that came out of the Southern Baptist Theological Seminary. Uh, they sing a lot of hymns, but they all always have kind of a modern sound, which I like. Um, so that's another great one to check out. Uh, we've got Andrew Peterson. Uh, I don't know if you've heard the song. Uh, I believe it's called His Heart Beats. It's a great song. Uh, there's, there's plenty more, too. This is so great to, to get these recommendations from you. Absolutely. I don't know if you had a chance since we last spoke to check out um, Scripture Lullaby. Yeah, I, I remember you saying that, and I looked into it a little bit. I want to look into it some more. The, the name alone sounds great. So. Well, you know, I'm, I'm old, so I like, <laughs> I like calm music, and it's really soothing. It's, it's literally lullaby music with beautiful singing of Scripture. And so they'll have, don't let your heart be troubled. You know, so they choose soothing passages from the Bible and put it to lullaby music, and it's one of my favorites. Yeah, that's hard to beat. I mean, one of the things I, I like to write about is how if you focus on God's Word and you write music and it's biblical, uh, you can't go wrong. Right. That sounds wonderful. Well, I mean, in the Bible, everyone was singing psalms. I mean, that's what psalms means, is songs. And so I like it when um, I'll go to a church and they're actually singing the psalms. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, man, you cannot go wrong with, with the Bible. <laughs> That's right. So um, who else do you recommend, Justin? Another good one will be Fernando Ortega. I think I'm saying that correctly. Uh, he has a beautiful voice. Of course, I mentioned the Gettys earlier. Uh, Keith and Kristen Getty, mm -hmm. they wrote the song In Christ Alone. Um, so almost anyone would know that song. Uh, and another good point to, to bring up with this would be we don't know every single artist that's great, but one thing that we encourage people to do is write to us and say, hey, we have this mm -hmm. artist. We believe that they, they could be solid. Or if you have no idea, still let us know and we can look into them. Um, we want to definitely put as much solid music as we can uh, on our website. And pray for the musicians too, because we've seen a few, not, not necessarily solid musicians, but famous musicians, um, leave the faith. So we need to be praying for our musicians. That's definitely true. Uh, I want to say it was the lead singer of maybe Hawk Nelson or something like that mm -hmm. recently. Uh, so sad to, to read about that. Yeah. Uh, yeah, being on stage has got to have its own stresses and temptations and they, they need us to, you know, support them absolutely. prayerfully. So this is a great list. I think that this could make a wonderful playlist. And do you know, I mean, of course, when I um, was listening to Christian music before I had discernment about it, I'd listen to K-Love mm -hmm. and they would play a lot of Bethel and Hill song. And, and now I don't, I, lis I, I actually listen to the um, podcast called RefNet Christian Radio. Oh, yeah. uh, and uh, they have music interspersed with sermons, but it's, I mean, it's like music you'd hear at um, a really solid church. And I can't think of any of the artists because it's just, um, they just kind of play through it. But are there any solid Christian music stations? Do they exist? Or could you make one? <laughs> yeah, I wish I could. And maybe one day that could yeah. be something. Uh, but sadly, like you say, that there's not many that will stick to only solid biblical artists. Mm -hmm. um, you mentioned Caleb, and I, I, don't, I don't want to bash any station or anything like that, unless it's completely necessary to warn the body of Christ about right. them. Um, but I, I had a similar experience with Caleb. Um, 
like you said, playing Bethel music, playing Hillsong, Elevation, extremely talented artists, mm -hmm. very catchy music. Yep. Um, but when you look at what they're, they're teaching in their churches, uh, it's definitely something to look into. Well, let's go through the arguments that uh, you and I both hear from people who want to say that a little bit of leaven is okay in their worship music. So one of the questions, and this is all on your website, soundinworship.com, um, people will say, what if we just sing the songs from Bethel or Hillsong or Elevation that have good lyrics? Right. So one of the main things about that would be, for my first question would be why? Uh, because there's many other great artists out there. Mm -hmm. so you, you don't have to use those songs. Um, so that would be my first honest question. The second thing would be, especially coming from a church, uh, whatever music your church is playing, your congregation is going to look to that and say, okay, this is music that I can trust. My church is playing this music. Um, and when you're playing something like Bethel music, you're introducing your congregation to Bethel church, Redding, California, Bill Johnson. It's a topic you cover often. Mm -hmm. um, that's something that you want to warn your congregation from. Uh, and to me, it's almost like free, very effective marketing yep. coming from a church or whatever platform it is um, for artists like that. So it's still dangerous to pick those songs that you may feel are good. Also, eventually their theology is going to leak through to yeah. the music. Um, when, and when they're singing about songs, like when they mention the Holy Spirit and God, uh, when you look into some of the things they believe, some of the things they're teaching, they may mean something completely different than you and I mean about Jesus mm -hmm. and God and the Holy Spirit. That's absolutely right. And so they might have two songs that are sound theologically or not 100% uh, not heretical. But, you know, it's like a broken clock that's right twice a day. And I love what you said, Justin, that it's a... Uh, it's an endorsement of Bethel from your church that people who don't have discernment and haven't studied the Bible, they wouldn't know any better. Right. Absolutely. I mean, you're going to have new Christians coming to your church or people who might even be saved who are wanting to learn more about Jesus. Um, you don't want to get them off on that track. Uh, there's something I, I wrote about recently or within the last few months about this kind of pattern that could easily happen. So, you're sitting at church, and I, I've done this several times. I hear a song that the worship band plays uh, at various churches, and I think, wow, I really like that song. I'm going to look into to who that is. This was pre-sound and worship time. Um, I would look at, just look for more songs from that artist. So you've got the lyrics. Mm -hmm. Google those lyrics. Find out who wrote that song. I mean, you can instantly know who wrote it basically. Yeah. Um, and then you think, okay, well, I'll go ahead and like that band on Facebook or, or follow them on Twitter. But by the time you've done that, you're being introduced to their theology. They're going to end up sharing sermons and things like that, that may not, most likely will not line up with the word of God. It's so true. It's a slippery slope. And the book of Hebrews warns us that we need to keep focused on Jesus and not drift away. And so these songs can be part of drifting away and that could be disastrous. Absolutely. So your next question on your website, these are the questions I get. So I love that you've got these outlined with answers. What's, what's the big deal about Bethel music? We've kind of covered that, but is there anything else? Yeah. So I encourage those who are watching this to look into them. If you haven't, um, I didn't pick an artist and just say, okay, I'm going to just speak negatively about this artist. I feel like everything that I'm saying needs to be said. It's being said by other reputable pastors and, and channels that, such as your own. Um, but th the practices that they do. So I don't know if, if whoever's watching, if they've seen the gold dust video, what they call a glory cloud. Um, it's really, really strange. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So they say that God's glory cloud, which you know, anyone who's read Exodus is familiar with that that it comes through their air conditioning ducts as glitter. Hmm. Don't know that chapter and verse. Exactly. Yeah. And I, I want to say that gold dust probably came from party city or something like that. Yes, indeed. It's, <laughs> it's really deceptive. Definitely. Definitely. And there, there's plenty of other things. Uh, recently they were Bethel church was holding some kind of event. Uh, most people may have seen this as well, where, 
they kind of did a Lord of the Rings chant mm-hmm. to end racism. We um, decree and declare that racism will end. It's over in the ecclesia from this night forward in Jesus' mighty name. Let's lift it up and bang it. <laughs> Hallelujah. Come on, give him a praise over it. That doesn't work. <laughs> Does so not. And, and especially, you know, I, I came out of the new age where I was a false prophet, false teacher. And, and I did that bit. I did the Lord of the Rings bit on stage many times as a false teacher. And we would say negative energy shall not pass. So when I saw Bethel doing that, I said, of course, they're doing it. They're new age with Christian veneer. That makes sense. And it's sad to watch that. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's things like that to where you really can't overlook it. Um, yes, they make really talented music, uh, but that doesn't really matter. Uh, they have to proclaim truth and they have to stick to the word of God. And they're not doing that. No, they're teaching that Jesus emptied his divinity during his earthly ministry, which is called the kenosis heresy, which means it's a primary issue, which means that people are getting a false gospel at Bethel. It's not on their, um, you know, about page because they've got it hidden, but there's a lot of evidence. Um, Here's one, here's, uh, put this up right here, where Bill Johnson, the lead pastor of Bethel, is teaching Jesus wrongly. And if you get Jesus wrong, then everything topples in your um, gospel presentation. Absolutely. That's definitely not something that you want to introduce your congregation to. It's Mm -mm. simple. The music then draws people to hear, like you said, they might watch Bethel TV and such and no. Um, yeah, I mean, th- music's addictive too, don't you think? Absolutely. Uh, like you were saying um, earlier about music that you heard in high school. I mean, I'll catch myself starting to sing lyrics and I'll have to stop and think, well, where did that come from? Like, yeah. I heard that song in 15 years. Um, yeah. So- it definitely it gets in your mind and uh it's amazing what you can do though it's amazing how your day can change and and how you can have more of a positive outlook when you hear solid worship music Mm -hmm. um it's amazing how great the other direction that that heads when you do that oh man yeah i I start my day listening to alistair Begg, and his his theme song is doxology and you just i mean yeah it's right it just starts the day with glorifying god so um, so here's a couple more questions, because I get a lot of letters, Justin, and, and you probably do too, from people who know that their church's music is, is off. They, they realize that their church should not be playing Bethel, but they don't know how to approach their pastor or worship leader. And so I wonder if you could kind of give some tips. Um, what should someone with discernment do? Yeah, I think the main thing to do, and it's kind of what, it's what we're doing here right now, um, is to do it out of love, mm-hmm. uh, of love for people at your church. Um, if you're wanting to talk to your pastor, pray first. Uh, you want to make sure you're doing it for the right reason. Uh, we're not here out here trying to say, oh, we, we found another artist that is off the path. That, that's not something that we want to, to find. Honestly, we want to find solid biblical artists. Um, so go to your pastor. Um, you can do that in a couple of ways. I, you know, you could send him an email and say, hey, I, I have something I'd like to talk to you about uh, in regards to the music that was played uh, on such and such date or, or some of the artists that I'm concerned with. Just do it out of love. Do it kindly and realize, you know, there was a time where I certainly didn't know about these artists, these movements. There's a good chance your pastor may not know about them. It's not a time to bash any pastor or anything like that. Go to them with loving motives and say, hey, this is why this artist is not something that should be played. I just wanted to bring this to your attention, and it, it'll go over well. Yeah, I agree. Um, I did an interview with David Henneke, um, who is a pastor at a Baptist church in Texas, and when he took over the church, they were playing Bethel music. He thought, no big deal, and someone wrote him an email, like you're suggesting, and said, what do you think about Bethel? So Pastor Henneke, to his credit, did research, found out the problems with Bethel and Hillsong and Elevation, 
and announced to the church, we aren't playing it anymore. And he said his whole worship band, his, the entire band quit the church. Oh and it's really interesting because I've, I've had pushback from, from people saying that their pastors say that if they don't play these, these songs, that they'll lose members. And their, their fear is, of course, the tithes will go down. But Pastor Henneke said, and I've got this on video, that his church became financially sound for the first time in the church's history after they replaced the you know, Bethel music with sound, doctrinally sound music. Well, that brings up the question naturally, what happened after your November 4th, 2018 sermon where you announced to your congregation that no more Bethel, no more Hillsong, no more Jesus culture music? How, how did that play out in your church? Well, for us directly, the way it played out was we had two little dynamics that happened. Uh, the, the worship team that was leading in the contemporary elements within the service uh, they, uh, we had follow-up meeting with them to really get into uh, some of the accusations that I made, some of the teachings of, of Bill Johnson and, and stuff like that. And uh, it came uh, very clear that uh, we are at a theological impasse. And so thankfully and very respectfully, uh, they, they stopped and they left the church. Uh, they uh, immediately that week came and picked up their stuff and they left. Uh, they didn't make a big stink about it. They didn't, you know, start as far as I know, you know, say things around mm -hmm. within the community. They just knew that uh, we weren't compatible theologically. Mm -hmm. And so mm -hmm. they, they, they left. So this um, is, these were members of your church on your worship team. Yes. Who left because uh, over the issue of Bethel music. Yes. How was that for you and the others? Was it divisive uh, or? Uh, the, the church, the congregation rallied behind it. Okay. There is a great appreciation for the stance that we, we took. And yes. so we immediately also, after that message, uh, it started to get shared you know, from, from friends uh, and, and people in the church. And so we immediately started to draw other people in into our church ah. because we were willing to take a stand on that issue. So after you eliminated the apostate music, did you have uh, any kind of financial problems in your church? Because that's the fear that a lot of churches have. I mean, did it create any kind of negative ripple effect financially for the church? Okay, so absolutely no. Like our, our attendance didn't drop off. In fact, uh, so at the end of 2019, uh, we were able to finish that year with a, uh, with a surplus. And so it has been, I think, at least uh, seven to 10 years uh, since the church hasn't lost money at the end of the year. So we actually uh, finished last year very solid with attendance, with participation, with our financial contributions. I'm telling you, trust God in all of this. And you're going to be okay. And that the number of members increased because the word got out. Oh, here's a church finally that's a sanctuary from <laughs> heretical music. So I think it's awesome. just... Isn't that, isn't that amazing? So some people may get offended, but in the long run, it's much needed right now. People want churches that have doctrinally sound music. Definitely, definitely. And that's a, that's a great story, too, about a pastor who wanted to be faithful to God. He didn't mm -hmm. care about losing members over doing the right thing. That's wonderful. Yeah. Um, I, God will honor that. We know that. So that's, that's great to hear. That's the best case scenario for what we're trying to do. Yeah, because I do hear from a lot of people who talk to their pastors and the pastors say, oh, sure, I'll read these articles, watch these videos that you've brought, and then they don't, and nothing changes. And then the people leave the church. And, you know, it's just, it's real sad to see that um, I would pray that pastors would be open to this sort of feedback and see that the, the music needs to complement the sermon, not bite the sermon. Absolutely. Absolutely. That's, that's a great point. Um, and it's, it's something that can be done and should be done. Mm -hmm. So it's not going to be difficult for a worship band to switch over to solid artists. Um, it definitely can be done. Yeah. Some people argue with me that, well, the old hymn writers, they had some heresies too. 
you know, they had some issues, but they don't have current churches that they're trying to draw people into. So there's a Absolutely. big difference. And I would avoid those hymn writers also. Um, yeah. uh, and then the other thing I've heard is that churches pay a royalty to have yeah. these, to have Bethel songs. Can you speak to that and why that's a problem? I can a little bit. Um, I don't know the exact legal terms and that kind of thing, but I do know if you're using an artist's music, you're supposed to to pay royalties in some ways if you use them for certain settings. Um, I believe there's a website, Christian Copyright Solutions, uh, that I reference for that. There are some ways that you can use the music and you may not have to pay a royalty, but in most cases for churches, I believe you would. Mm -hmm. um, so like you're saying, you, you don't want your tithes and, offer, tithes and offerings going towards something like that, for sure. Yeah, every time you um, pay a royalty to Bethel, you're helping them to build another mega church. Right. Exactly. So, yeah, we have to be very careful with this. Um, another question on your website is, what if my worship band only knows today's most popular artists? Yeah, I would say there are plenty of other artists that you can learn for one and two uh, going back to being faithful. Um, this is God that we're worshiping here. So it's not something that should be taken lightly. Um, and you'd be surprised at how much better solid worship music is obviously because it's rooted in biblical truth. Um, it, there's something that, that makes me think about this as well. Uh, a lot of, the music that we're hearing today, it seems to be rooted in emotion, um, like the Bethel and Elevation Hill song, that kind of thing. It seems that that's a great way to get people to listen to their music. You know, when you hear it, it's going to bring emotion. But what these bands should be doing is seeking to sing biblically true sound artists, sound lyrics. That will bring you to emotion naturally. Mm -hmm. Singing of God's truths, uh, that's bound to happen but we shouldn't seek emotion first. Yeah, so the emotion that a lot of these songs evoke is that um, mystical experience over scripture. It, it can be hard to pick out. Um, like you're saying, some of those lyrics may not seem that way, but when Bethel sings about the Holy Spirit, you have to be really careful and mm -hmm. you, to really realize what, they're, what they mean by that. Uh, what, what do they claim the Holy Spirit does? Um, it's a pretty dangerous thing. Yeah, so it's in a hyper charismatic sense, which is not biblical. Right. Yeah. Um, also, now I haven't heard these songs, but I have had feedback from people telling me that some of these songs cast Jesus in a romantic light, which is really troubling to hear. Yeah, I've heard of that too. I've, I've, I've always heard that you could almost switch out love songs with Jesus' name and, and that would be some of the artists music that you're hearing today. That's very odd um, and very concerning. And not biblical. The biblical love with Jesus is agape, not eros. So exactly. why is reckless love such a problem? Yeah. So that honestly is just rooted in what, and what Bethel is trying to proclaim. Um, is the love of God really reckless? Uh, I would say not. Um, God is sovereign and his love is his love. It's not reckless. Um, he's gracious to love us. He's merciful to love us. Um, so that song is, it's definitely sounds like it, it might be very creatively written and that kind of thing, but not necessarily biblical. That's so true. Are there any other bands we've, we've mentioned Bethel, Hillsong, and Elevation. Are there other bands that we should be avoiding? Yeah, um, I had a, a, I guess, a reader of my blog um, write in and ask about a couple. Um, IHOP, so the Inter International House of Prayer, um, and I was able to explain why, you know, they're taught by Mike Bickle, mm -hmm. um, who's a false teacher. All right. Uh, so that would be another one to watch out for. Um, and really, you need to look into every artist. There are so many artists out there. Um, it's hard to keep track. And like you say, when you're listening to Caleb and, and things like that, they're going to be playing through several different artists. Um, it's important to look into any of them mm -hmm. uh, because a lot of people are not doing that right now. 
And I think it's something that should be done. Yeah, I agree. And, and also to keep up with who they hang out with, right? Because there's some artists who seem to be solid, but they're at Bethel conferences or the passion conferences. And, and, uh, and so we want to just have caution whenever you see an artist playing at these events. Yeah, I would completely agree with that. Mm -hmm. uh, and it makes you wonder when you see artists doing that kind of thing. Um, you know, I try to avoid a guilty by association to some level, but at the same time, it's hard to imagine that these artists don't know what's going on at mm -hmm. Bethel, yeah. um, especially artists on their label. I've, I've heard people say, well, their entire record label is not, you know, unsound or anything like that. Well, I mean, they knew, they know who they're working with. Um, and, and that kind of leads to my main hope from this. One of my main hopes, I want Christians to find solid biblical worship music, worship God in spirit and truth. And I would also love to see people from Bethel Church, um, even any of their artists to say, look, I, you know, I'm convicted by this. I know that what I'm doing is not right. I shouldn't be supporting this glory cloud, gold dust, Lord of the Rings type of new age thing. I can use my talents that God gave me to glorify God. That was the best thing. Oh man, let's pray for them. That's Amen. that's so important. And what a what a testimony that would glorify God if someone admitted the heresy and then became a solo artist or joined up with the Gettys or something. Mm -hmm. That would be wonderful. Right? I, I would love to see that. And you know, this is coming from two people who have failed many times in life and I've had to repent. Um, mm -hmm. I've heard your testimony on, mm -hmm. on your channel and uh, same for me. I've, I've failed many times, but thankfully God is gracious and he convicts and leads us to repent. Oh man. Yeah. Yeah. Repentance is such a gift that he's given us. It's not a punishment. It's a gift. Absolutely. Oh, wow. Justin, this has been such a great and helpful roundup about um, music, the good, the bad, and the ugly. Yes. And uh, we really appreciate that. Again, please go to soundinworship.com. It sounds like people can message you there and contact yeah, you. Definitely. You can send me an email. There's a contact page. Um, feel free to just peruse the site. Um, like I said earlier, we're building out some playlists. So it um, may give you a, a better idea of some great sound biblical artists that are definitely out there.